What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In our last video, we installed and configured Azure AD Connect and in this video, we're gonna start migrating on-prem mailboxes to the cloud. So there's a couple of things you'll need to have beforehand to make this migration work successfully. Um, one of those things is you'll need to make sure that your service account or whatever account you're using to migrate has either the organization management or the recipient management permissions on exchange. Uh, this is used for the actual mailbox migrations. Uh, next, you'll need to open up port 443 on your firewall to your on-prem exchange server. And this is so AutoDiscover can correctly identify and detect your settings. And finally, we're going to verify that your MRS proxy service is enabled on your on-prem exchange server. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and actually hop on over to our on-prem exchange server and verify that that is enabled. So to do that, we'll go and open up Internet Explorer and um, we'll go ahead and navigate to mail.thesysadminchannel.com forward slash ECP. Um, we'll then enter in our credentials to move forward. All right, and now that we're on our Exchange Admin Center, we'll go ahead and click on Servers and then from there, um, Virtual Directories. And here, if we open up the EWS, the Exchange Web Services, we can see that the MRS proxy is enabled. I also wanted to point out that the internal and external URL are set to mail.thesysadminchannel.com. Uh, we did that in a previous Exchange video. Um, here you can see the authentication is set to the default. And that, are pretty, that pretty much sums it up for what we need to do in on-prem exchange. Uh, next up, we'll go to admin.microsoft.com, which is the Office 365 Admin Center. I'm going to authenticate here. So since I have uh, two-factor enabled, I need to respond to my authentication request. All right, and from there, we're going to go to the Exchange Admin Center. So we'll go ahead and click on that from the left panel. All right, so once in the Exchange Admin Center, I'm going to go to mailboxes. And currently I only have two mailboxes that were already migrated. Um, so if I go to shared, uh, currently we have nothing and that's what we're going to migrate today. So to do that, we'll go to migration and then we'll click on the little plus sign to migrate to Exchange Online. And once the dialog pops up, we'll click on the default to migrate from 2010 and later. And from there, we'll click on the little plus sign to migrate uh, Shared Mailbox 1. We're actually going to migrate Shared Mailbox 2 with PowerShell, so we can stand by on that one. And here, we're going to enter in the account that has the organization management or the recipient management permissions in Exchange. So in my case, that's going to be SVC Mail Migration. And um, you just need to enter in the username and password for that. Next up, we need to configure our migration endpoint. Uh, this is probably the part where most people generally have problems. It could either be because of the firewall ports are not opened or because of the account that's being used doesn't have the correct permissions, or it could just be something up with your MRS proxy service. So definitely watch out for that. And in my case, my settings are mail.thesysadminchannel.com because that's where my MRS proxy is pointing to. So that's what I'm going to type in. And if you've made it this far, you're mostly in the clear. Um, for my batch name, I'll just type in batch one. The target delivery domain, I'll go ahead and leave that the default. And if we click on more options here, it gives us the option to either enter in a bad item limit or a large item limit. But since it literally says right there, it is recommended to leave these values blank. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we'll go ahead and click next to move on. And here we're given the option to either manually start, automatically start or schedule the beginning of the migration. Um, in my case, I'm going to automatically start the batch. And if we wanted to um, complete the migration in the same manner, uh, we have the options there. So we can either manually complete it, automatically complete it, or complete it on a specific date and time. And in my case, I'm going to want to automatically start and complete the migration batch. So I'll go ahead and set that and select new. And then here it's just telling us that the save saving completed successfully. All right, so here it's actually gonna take a little bit of time because it's migrating from on-prem to the cloud. So I'm gonna skip this part just a little bit and then we'll come back once it's done. All right, so that took a good uh, half an hour to complete. If I go ahead and click on the status here, we can see that it did complete successfully with zero items skipped and 21 items synced. It was pretty much a blank mailbox. 
But if we go ahead and click on more details, we can see what's going on there. So here we have some statistics. We can see that the in-progress duration took about uh, 2 minutes and 46 seconds. Um, in general, though, it does take much, much longer when you migrate an account using the GUI as opposed to using it in PowerShell. The good thing is that any future accounts that we want to migrate, the endpoint's already going to be set up. So I'm just going to speed through this like just like we did before. Um, notice here that Shared Mailbox 1 is no longer available in the list. But if we notice here, the endpoint migration is already set. So we can uh, just go ahead and click Next through there, and it should work. So that's one less step we need to do in the future. All right, next up, we're going to want to migrate our shared mail, our second shared mailbox to the cloud using PowerShell. So to do that, we're going to want to download the PowerShell module for Exchange Online. Um, this also supports multi-factor. So if your account does have multi-factor enabled, it would work. So to demonstrate that, I've already opened up the module. And then we'll type in a connect XOPS session to sign into Exchange Online. So here I'm just going to enter in my credentials. And then um, as you can see, I do have multi-factor enabled. So let's go ahead and approve that request. And then now the module should be loading. All right, to kick off a mailbox migration using PowerShell, we're first going to need to grab the credentials of the account that's going to be used to migrate. So in my case, it's going to be the SVC mail migration account that we specified earlier. So once we go ahead and enter that into a variable, we should be good. And the command here that we're going to use is the new move request. And we're going to specify the shared mailbox to identity along with the remote, remote credentials, remote host name, and target delivery domain parameters. Um, this is going to be used to successfully migrate an account to the cloud using PowerShell. And as I mentioned before, it's much, much quicker. So uh, this should only take about maybe five minutes or less to migrate. So it looks like the command did take since I didn't see any errors. And if we go ahead and do a get move request, we can see the current status of all migrations that are taking place at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for about five minutes and then uh, come back. All right, so it's been about five minutes. And if I go ahead and up arrow here, we can see that both mailboxes have migrated successfully. And to confirm that, we'll go ahead and run the command uh, get mailbox shared mailbox one and get mailbox shared mailbox two. Uh, this just lets us know that the commands are responsive to the cloud. So they are, they are in fact in the cloud. All right, and if we go back into the GUI and if we refresh our shared mailbox page, we should now see both shared mailbox one and two already populated. So I should mention that shared mailboxes don't need licenses. So if you were migrating a regular person or a regular mailbox, um, you would need to assign them a license. And to demonstrate that, we'll go ahead and open up our Don Jones test account. And here, if we click on licenses and apps, uh, you would just simply need to check the box that's valid for that account. And if the license does support a mailbox and OneDrive, it should be populated there as well. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. This is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.